Central Nigeria has a problem with cows. Millions of people rely on them for their livelihood, especially a semi-nomadic ethnic minority called the Fulani. But when the cows are out grazing, they often stomp through farms, spurring fights that quickly escalate. Entire villages are decimated in the crossfire between farmers and herders. The countryside is strewn with the ruins of communities from both sides of the conflict. Over the last decade, Nigeria's farmer-herder conflict has killed thousands and displaced tens of thousands. In some years, it's been responsible for more deaths than the Islamic insurgents of Boko Haram. You have communities that are striving to survive, and then all of a sudden they are against each other, killing and maiming and destroying. Livelihoods get gone, children get killed, houses get burned, crops are not cultivated, people run away, people become refugees in their country. Livestock producers whose history are tied to the hearts that they have, you know, they lose their hearts, they lose their history and everything. The problem could only get worse as traditional cattle areas in the far north continue to dry up due to climate change. Climate change plays a very, very important and critical role in the life of pastoralists. And it has been the push factor that has pushed pastoralists more from the Sahelian areas and drier savanna areas to other parts of the country. In response, some Nigerian states are considering a controversial approach to peace building, a ban on all cattle grazing. Here in Benway State, a ban went into effect on November 1st. Now, cattle must be kept in fenced off ranches, or herders can face massive fines, jail time, and the confiscation of their herds. Technically, the cows you see here are criminals. But the government has not opened any of the public ranches it promised, leaving herders in limbo. Creative solutions are needed to move cows from place to place. Local Fulani leaders say the ban is discriminatory, impossible to comply with, and could leave thousands of people destitute. They say nobody should go out with a cattle. Somebody who has about 1,000 cattle, I want him to put them in fence. While there's no grass, how can he put them? And where will you get the grass to feed the 1,000 cattle? Gololo says it's little more than an effort to drive Fulani out of the state. Their professional has been denied. Their legal right has been denied from them. But there is no deal that said you, as a citizen, you should just go away. Benway's main cattle market illustrates the difficulty of the transition from grazing to confinement. The day the ban took effect, thousands of cows were suddenly trapped inside with no food or water. Because of the law, our cows have not gone out to day. As a result of that, some of the cows started dying. Some of them cannot walk. Keeping the cows fed without grazing is a crippling expense. If you're going to feed a cow a day, you spend not less than 1,000. And let's say you have 20 cows, you're spending 20,000 a day. And sometimes you stay up to two, three weeks without you selling a single cow. That means all of us are dead. Very, very sad. All of us, there are a lot of people that are even contemplating living the town. Even some, believe me you, in one month time you experience a case of suicide in this our market. We have no any other way of livelihood. That is the only way we live on. If you say they're not going out, they start dying, you have no means of feeding yourself and your family, then what's the next? We live and die here. Some Fulani, like Saleh Tambaya, made the decision to flee Benue with their herds. When his family crossed this river, two of his sons drowned, along with dozens of cattle. Still, hundreds of his neighbors followed the same dangerous route. Now they're living as squatters, in temporary shelters, constantly on edge about the risk of conflict with local farmers. Benue's grazing ban is an attempt to adapt natural resource laws to the warming world. But Tambaya's experience shows how that change can come with unintended humanitarian consequences. So what we are having at the moment is a chaotic rural landscape. Rather than the Nigerian state, the institutions, to sit down and take a thorough analysis and come out with pragmatic mechanisms for dealing with rural insecurity, we are now going on to make restrictive policies that tend to punish or tend to eliminate the livelihoods of a critical sector of the Nigerian economy, the livestock producers. Saminu Muhammad is a Fulani who decided to stay in Benway State. He lives in fear of vigilante groups deputized by the government to enforce the ban. But he and his family have nowhere else to go. There's no choice but to take his chances in the place he's always called home. 
I think they're just creating a scenario for chaos, a scenario for civil disobedience, a scenario that will result into more conflicts rather than resolving conflicts. Yeah, I get it. No. Uh-huh.